So I'm quite selective when I buy anything really. I don't buy anything on a spur of the moment type thing. I always do full research of stuff um, before I consider buying it. I want to weigh it up against all the competitors. And this is the result of me applying that sort of logic towards Lovecraftian books. So this is basically my entire collection that I have so far. And this is what I think is basically what is necessary to to really get, you know, into the meat of what Lovecraft is about. When you're buying for Lovecraft, um, you don't just go for uh, a complete anthology. If you consider yourself a real Lovecraftian person, you know, because there's so much more to him than just, you know, getting a Call of Cthulhu and all the other greatest hits, you know. It just doesn't work. And also, he was such a prodi uh, prodigious writer that to fit everything that he really wrote with reading, because let's face it, some of the stuff he wrote was a bit hit and miss. But nonetheless, to get everything that he wrote into one book, uh, this is not really going to happen, I'm afraid. So you're going to have to buy quite a few books to really get into... Uh, the meat of what he did and to actually appreciate what he could do you know in various um, uh, spectrums I guess you could say because he wasn't all just horror he had some lighter sides to him he even wrote a romance story that I haven't read that and I don't really intend to but he did do dream cycles which were not really horror related he did do poetry and he did do a lot of non-fiction as well Sadly, I don't have any of that. I won't go in, in, into any deep, in-depth book review here. I'd like to do that maybe later on. But just to get a basic idea, uh, if you want to go for Lovecraft, I would go suggest getting this book. It's from Barnes & Noble, as far as I can see. Uh, yeah, the cover is <laughs> damaged as hell from too much reading and uh, wine spillage, I guess you could say. <laughs> this is a really a top-notch book. Uh, there are plenty, plenty of completed works of him. Uh, like I said, you're not going to find one book that is complete, completely, you know. Uh, but this book is really worth getting. I think mainly because it lists everything he's done. So he wrote this when he was young, for example. And it lists everything in chronological order. And on each story... As you can see here, it gives a brief description about when the story was written, what was going on in his life during the time, and so forth. This is really a must-get, I think. Uh, it has a few typos. I've read that on the internet and people complained about it, but come on. You know, nothing in this life is really perfect, right? Uh, this is a secondary book I got. Uh, it actually has a sister book called Necronomicon, I, feel. I think it is called that. And it basically serves the purpose that this book served. It's uh, Necronomicon, which is the second to this. It uh, has Call of the Cthulhu, uh, Rats in the Walls, etc. It's got all the big works. And this was all the leftovers, basically. Um, there's a few stories in here that overlap with the uh, Barnes & Noble's book. But it does feature enough that you could justify getting it. And it also does have illustrations, which is a nice touch. I don't think he drew any of this. He wasn't really good at art, as far as I know. But it does have a lot of nice secondary content and also some co-written stuff. Definitely worth looking at. Mm, this one is a... Uh, I got this so cheap, six bucks. And for Switzerland, that is extremely cheap for any book here. Uh, basically, this book was eh, a bit of a disappointment, I'm afraid. Most of the stuff here is co-written stuff. And in a lot of cases, uh, it's very evident that it was co-written, you know. By that I mean that um, it was diluted. It's diluted Lovecraft, really. It um, works where he may have edited some of the things. He may have given some pointers. And there was enough to justify his... Um, uh, getting a title on the authorship, right? But a lot of the ideas in the story are just of in these stories are just sort of mm, Lovecraft light. 
Nonetheless, nonetheless, it's six bucks and it's got Lovecraft in the title. I can't not buy it. So basically, two books like this are enough to get everything that you really need to read about him. Lovecraft did a lot of poetry. Um, there's a few po poetry anthologies. Uh, apart from his fiction, you're going to have to look at a few other things to really get a good collection going. Uh, firstly, would be his biography. Now this, this is where to go. I Am Providence. I Am Providence was uh, compiled by S.T. Joshi and he wrote everything in it really. And my god, <laughs> reading this is like being back at university. It is like a textbook. Oh my fuck. They really include, he really went all out here when he included so many details about Lovecraft that it even at times becomes a little bit too much, you know? It's just, why do you need to know some of these things? But the fact that they are in there is just amazing. And it's not like it's not backed up without any sources. If you look at the back, you have all the references, all these letters that Lovecraft wrote. And obviously we know Joshi is like the patron saint of Lovecraft, so we can be assured that uh, these sources are not just uh, google.com, what did Lovecraft think about, you know, cats or some shit like that. No, everything here is extremely in-depth. And it basically covers everything in his life. Uh, <laughs> there are two editions, well, no, two volumes, rather. Uh, I believe... Initially, it was published as one, and that clocked in at over a thousand pages. If I remember correctly, uh, this is from his birth until his time in uh, New York, and this is from New York until his death. Really, these are muskets. If, if you can tolerate some heavy reading, and you actually really, really care about the man, not just his stories. Okay, that's a bit of a creepy shot there. Excuse me. Uh, next up I have is this book. It was by Michel Holebeck. Um, I'm not French. I don't make excuses. I don't know how to pronounce French names. But yeah, he wrote this basically as an essay. And basically I consider it like a love letter. It's a, it's a fan adoration of Lovecraft. This book seeks to explain the mentality of Lovecraft, the ethos of Lovecraft, the philosophy he had, um, why he was how he was, and how other people, other Lovecraftians related to him and sort of built this cult around him, and the, the mythos he built, and it's not at all, um, it's not biographical, it's basically, um, Let's call it a philosophical analysis. That would be the best way to look at it. But really, really, if you consider yourself a Lovecraftian, I cannot say that you can complete a collection without this book. It really is a must get. And uh, lastly in my collection would be the, uh, the new Lovecraft and also the post Lovecraft, I guess, and also his contemporary Lovecraftian writers. Uh, that's kind of going back to what I said about this book mentioning that Lovecraft formed a cult unintentionally about himself and as a result there are a ton of authors not just his contemporaries of which there are plenty Clark Ashton Smith, Fritz Leiber, Robert Bloch, uh, Robert Price I gotta say if you're gonna buy um, a compilation of non-Lovecraft Lovecraftian stories just be very careful what you buy, because a lot of them contain shit. Um, sorry to say it, but, you know, just adding tentacles to your story doesn't make it Lovecraftian. The first one here is uh, Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos, Mythos. And this one was the first one I already picked up in a bookstore in Manila, actually. And this one is notable because, look at the lineup. These are like the Lovecraft alumni, really, really, really. And if you look at some of the titles, you will definitely recognize them. If you are keeping up with um, Lovecraft fiction, because 
Well, for example, the Hounds of Tindalos. If you play the uh, Lovecraft board, um, uh, what do you call that, Arkham Horror board game, you have the Hounds of Tindalos in there, and it's a recurring monster, sort of. You got the Shambler from the Stars, also a part of the Arkham Horror board game. And it's actually good to actually have an idea where all these things came from, you know. These are the actual stories um, which spawn these common Lovecraftian monsters, even though they didn't actually come from the mind of Lovecraft. And this is a sort of sequel to that book, um, Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos. Here we have Tales of the Lovecraft Mythos. And like this one, it features all the big name authors you would expect from that pulp era. And a lot of stories which also, like the other one, uh, show the backstory to some famous Lovecraftian characters and monsters, really. For example, Starspawn, Ithaqua. Mm, these things are all in um, Arkham Horror Board Game, for example. Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, I think. And, yeah, it's just great to know about them, where they came from and all these sort of things. So these two... Uh, really, if you want to start anywhere with um, the tertiary Lovecraftian fiction, I say tertiary because I consider his poetry and co-writing as secondary, is these two. And very quickly at the end, um, if you actually care about um, where Lovecraft got his ideas from, you're going to need to go for things like this. Um, the King in Yellow, which was heavily... Uh, admired by Lovecraft, I guess you could say. It was a book, well, it's, it's a collection of short stories, but, uh, for example, we know about Haster and the Yellow Sign, and this is where that story came, that uh, sort of mythos um, trope came from, or trope that character came from, rather. Uh, and also, of course, Edgar Allan Poe, which is another beautiful book uh, by the same uh, people that made this one. Unfortunately, they don't do the intro to each story, um, but it does feature a lot of his poetry, and it really is just a, a beautiful book to hold and to feel, and it's heavy, it's really well made. Uh, personally, I'm not really a Poe fan. I know it's ironic, maybe, um, but it's always good to have, and occasionally good to read. So yeah, there's a lot of other Lovecraftian fiction you can buy. Uh, there's no shortage of it. Um, but really, if you want to get a nice collection going and you've already got a completed works, which most likely you do if you are a Lovecraft fan and you're watching this, then these are some of the things that I would really, really recommend going after. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. This is my, my first video for this channel. I definitely want to make it grow a bit more and uh, have a little bit more fun with it because, hey, everyone's on YouTube these days, eh? And then there seems to be no Lovecraftian channel, so mm, why not make one? Alright, cheers.